Um, shoulder dislocations are common. Um, show of hands, who tends to sedate people for shoulder reductions? Vast majority of you. Okay, so this is going to be worth the price of admission for you guys. Well, maybe not worth the price of ASAP admission. It's pretty pricey. Um, but it's, you're, you're going to like it, okay? Um, I, have not sent, I have not done a procedural sedation in five years for a shoulder reduction, um, with the exception of three people, all of whom failed procedural sedation and went to the OR for their shoulders. And the way I've done it is by doing ultrasound-guided joint injections. And you may say, well, I've tried joint injections and they didn't work for me. And I'd ask you, every time you injected a joint, did you aspirate blood before you injected the joint? And if the answer is no, I'm going to tell you you weren't in the joint. So go ahead and put a probe on the patient's back. I use a curve probe for this because the, the detail isn't important. We're not looking for a nerve. We want a big global look at the back of this patient's shoulder. For people who don't have a curve probe, you could do this with a phased array, the cardiac or square probe. You could do it with a linear probe. It's just my, my personal preference. Once you get that view, you can have the patient gently internally, externally rotate. Obviously, if they're dislocated, they won't be able to do that. But what it looks like in a healthy shoulder is scapula and humeral head. This is rotator cuff up top. When they do that, that confirms that they're not dislocated. You're seeing the humeral head located in the glenoid, and it's moving back and forth. And this has value in and of itself just to confirm dislocation or reduction, right? If you've ever done a sedation, and a lot of you guys have for this, you, um, you've probably had at least once, you weren't sure if it was in or out, you stopped the sedation, you got an x-ray, and it was still out, and you had to start all over again. Instead, of, even if you don't use this for the injections, you can just throw that probe on and see if they're in or out without having to wake the patient up. Um, this is what it looks like when it's out. You've got the shoulder here, the scapula, up onto the glenoid. You've got an effusion here, and the humeral head is down here. This is actually part of the humeral shaft. But remember, the probe is on the posterior aspect. So this is posterior. This is anterior. That's how most of your shoulders are going to go. So it's going to be deep on the screen up there. So first, just get used to looking at whether it's in or out. Okay, does that look in or out? Mumbles. It's in. Okay, so right, here's the, here's the scapula. Straight into humeral head here. All right, that's a normal shoulder joint. How about this one? Out. You guys have got it. It takes all of looking at three of them. Right? There's the scapula. There's the rotator cuff dragged over the shoulder joint. There's the humerus. And there's a mix of bright and black. The bright is clot. The black is blood. And that's the uh, joint capsule filled with hemarthrosis. All right, so this is one of our fellows from last year who stayed on his faculty doing a block. She's getting uh, blood out as she's aspirating with a spinal needle. I think you need a spinal needle in all but the smallest people. And that's probably another reason why we didn't get in. It's actually a lot deeper than you think it is. Um, here's the ultrasound screen up there. Not the best ergonomics, but the patient's gurney is up against the, the side of the room here, so we'll give her a break. What I can't give her a break on is no gloves. Um, so I, I told her that I, would, I wouldn't make it look as bad as, as it was when it happened. So there, remember that picture. Um, that was like 10 minutes of my time that didn't need to be spent on that, but I, I, couldn't, I couldn't help it. So, you know, here's the needle coming in, lateral to medial, and uh, boom, right into the joint. Um, when you go ahead and inject, you're actually going to see um, local anesthetic. At first, you'll see a couple of air bubbles, the bright stuff, right there. And then you're going to see local anesthetic kind of swirling in there. It's a good reminder that whenever you do blocks of any kind, flush the needle all the way because you want the first thing that comes out to be black. If you get a bunch of air in there, it may obscure your view of whatever you're doing. Not for this, but if you're doing a nerve block and it's kind of finessed a little bit, you may not get the best view if you put air in first. So you go ahead and block. And then this, just to kind of get ready to wrap up for us, um, is a... Uh, we had two patients roomed at the same time in the hallway with uh, shoulder dislocations, first-time dislocators, and it was the end of a, of a busy swing shift, and um, myself and Carter Clements, one of the other longtime attendings at Carter, at, uh, at, at Highland, uh, we, we grabbed two interns, and we said, you're assigned to this one, and you're assigned to this one, and the clock starts now. Um, and we let them go in shoulder wars. So this is uh, no patient information, but... Attendings, residents, they're hanging that person, thinking about blocking them. You know, procedures like this at Highland, these are the hallway procedures. Um, so we're over here. I don't have gloves on, but I'm not touching the patient. Um, she's got gloves on. She's aspirating, uh, aspirating blood from the joint. And you see how deep she is with that 25-gauge needle? She's indenting the skin, and this is not a big guy. Um, and you go ahead and look over at the ultrasound screen, and, uh, and there's the needle, and there's your local anesthetic diffusing into the joint.
Um, so we wait about three minutes because we're in a hurry. We want to beat the other team. Um, and then she's just going to go ahead and, um, you know, gentle uh, forward traction, external.